Floyd Collins was a cave explorer who died once but was buried four times in a cave which was famously known as a tourist spectacle. The Mammoth Cave, which resides in the sandstone-capped Mississippian limestone karst near Brownsville, Kentucky, was made regionally famous in equal parts by the demand for saltpeter in gunpowder manufacturing and the fearless explorations of Stephen Bishop, an enslaved African-American and tour guide during the 1840s. And more than 80 years ago, one man's interest and curiousness led to the most famous rescue drama of the time. On the chilly, windy morning of January 30, 1925, there was a 37-year-old Kentucky farmer as well as an intrepid cave explorer named Floyd Collins. Squeezed his lanky, raw-boned and around 160 pound deep into a cave which he had discovered just a few miles from his Barron County home just outside of the cave city. Floyd was searching not for adventure but hope for a new life. Just down the road, the infamous Mammoth Cave attracted thousands of tourists. The caves for the new automobile traveler had become a cash crop for Kentucky. From an early age, Floyd Collins developed a hobby of exploring caves. This pastime hobby led to the discovery of Crystal Cave in 1917 under his father's farmland. Floyd Collins had developed the cave into a tourist attraction that boasted unique gypsum cave formations. Also during Floyd's time, cave tourism was a very profitable and very competitive business. Due to aggressive and highly suspicious practices between competing cave owners, this era became known as the Cave Wars. Floyd Collins knew of another potential cave located on property owned by Beasley Doyle. The cave, called the Sand Cave, had prime real estate situated right beside Cave City Road. The travelers would easily pass by Sand Cave before continuing to other show caves, such as Mammoth Cave. Floyd agreed with Beasley Doyle to explore Sand Cave and share the profits if the cave proved worthy to show. Floyd initially entered the Sand Cave on January 30, 1925, and with him he only had a single kerosene lantern and then shortly found it offered many challenges. Floyd squeezed through the tight passageways of the cave, and at one point it was so tight that Floyd had to inch through on his stomach, with Floyd's one arm outstretched ahead of him, pushing on his lantern, and the other arm at his side. Now beyond this crawl, the cave began to open up, however his lantern suddenly began to dim down. Floyd had discovered one of Kentucky's most beautiful caves. He had called it the Crystal Cave for the gypsum flowers which amazingly shined like crystals when his lantern light settled on them. However, the Crystal Cave was too remote for most tourists. Floyd believed that his latest finding, an opening he named it the Sand Cave, might lead into Mammoth, just like the tributary feeding into a river. Indeed, a steady stream of tourists and fame and fortune lay just beyond the darkness if it did. Then the next morning, he descended into the shaft as he had done on other days. Crawling homeward, which was about 120 feet from the entrance and 55 feet underground, Floyd then knocked over the adventurer's oil lamp and was plunged into total darkness. He squirmed head first toward the cave's mouth until, with one thrust, Floyd's foot dislodged an overhanging boulder from the cave wall. The boulder fell, pinning the explorer's left ankle in a narrow crevice. And the more he fought to free himself, the more rock and debris Floyd tore loose. Soon, the cave held Collins in an ever-tightening vice. Floyd Collins, who had been crawling into caves since boyhood, had been in tight spots before, but unfortunately never one in which he felt so helpless. Floyd's hands had become scraped as well as bloody from clawing at rocks. The icy snowmelt dripped through the cave's roof onto his face. Also, the damp ground in the 54-degree Fahrenheit chamber chilled him, and even knowing it would be hours before family and friends missed him, he yelled for help until he lost his voice. All alone with his thoughts, one memory went across his mind. Just a day earlier, Floyd had told his stepmother Jane that he would dream about being trapped by a rock in his new cave, and he would see that angels had come for him. And about his latest discovery, Miss Jane had warned, Don't go back in there, Floyd. Later on Saturday morning, his neighbors found Floyd's coat hanging just inside the entrance to the cave. They then crawled through the narrow passage until they heard him cry out and gathered a rescue team. Floyd's younger brother Homer, who was one of the very first to reach him. Floyd's body was pinned tightly between the cave's walls and it blocked Homer's attempts to get his foot. The best Homer could do was scrape some dirt away, feed him sausages and coffee, and then place an oilcloth over his face to soothe the torture of the perpetually dripping cold water. Homer then watched his brother slip in and out of consciousness and heard him say again and again, Take me home to bed, Homer. Later, Floyd said to another neighbor who crawled in, I am trapped for life. Then on day three of his entrapment, the Louisville Courier-Journal dispatched a 21-year-old reporter named William Miller to the scene. When William arrived at the cave, he asked Homer for details. 
Homer, whose nerves frayed and his body seemed weary, snapped, If you want information, there's the hole right over there. You can go down and see it for yourself. Later on, William Miller said, I was ashamed not to go. A bit frightened, yet still spurred by his journalistic duty, Miller then entered the cave with Homer, who did not know that soon his life would be always and forever linked to that of the trap man. On the 18th day after his entrapment, the rescuers finally reached Floyd through 55 feet vertical shaft, but sadly it was too late. Floyd was pronounced dead from the exposure, and Sand Cave was sealed with Floyd's body inside. Then only months later his body was able to be removed for a formal burial closer to his family's home near Crystal Cave. Floyd Collins now rests in the Mammoth Cave Baptist Church Cemetery. The life of Floyd Collins, along with the tragic events surrounding his death, captivated the country's attention. It brought many changes to the rural community in south-central Kentucky that is home to Mammoth Cave. Floyd's amazing story would later go on to inspire books such as Trapped. It was written by Robert K. Murray and Roger W. Brucker, and The Life and Death of Floyd Collins is written by Floyd's brothers, Homer Collins and John L. Lehrberger, explaining his journey. Despite now resting in the Mammoth Cave Baptist Church Cemetery, the memory of Collins lingers. There's a Floyd Collins Museum that exhibits mementos of his time as both a media and macabre spectacle, and some say the spirit of the intrepid explorer even roams the caves. According to Mammoth Cave tour guide Colleen Olson, one person was caving near part of the cave where Floyd, when he was alive, would go caving, and she tripped and she started to fall. And then she felt somebody grab her and pull her back, and of course she thought it was her caving partner. So she was about to say, thanks Richard, thanking her pal, but he was way on the other side. So then when she realized it wasn't Richard, she said, thanks Floyd. It was no doubt the inspiration for a world touring musical, Floyd Collins, along with the 1951 Hollywood film Ace in the Hole. And more importantly, the life and death of Floyd Collins drew the nation's attention to Kentucky's cave country, along with the desire to protect it, eventually leading to the establishment of Mammoth Cave National Park in 1941. However, in the case of Floyd Collins, even a cave ghost is no match for the strange truth of his wandering corpse and its glass-topped coffin. What are your thoughts on this? Let us know in the comment section down below. Thank you for watching this video. If you found it interesting, take a deep dive into the like and subscribe buttons. Let us know what you thought of it in the comments. See you again soon in another video, if you dare.